Hello everyone, I hope you're well. I am going to be doing a short demonstration of a painting I'm sort of in the middle of um, in this video. This is being done from a small sketch I've done in a sketch pad um, last year in fact, uh, 27th of February um, at the train station. And it's basically just a quick sketch of a um, person standing there on their phone in pencil. Um, I've kind of drawn the figure out and I've got um, a basic sort of basic chunks of paint on um, and now I'm going to be carrying on with it. Right well we're closer in now on the picture and my voice is probably slightly louder. Um, this is the drawing that I showed you just then and it's um, quite a sort of simplistic pencil sketch but in a lot of ways it has um, a lot of meat and meat and drink or sort of stuff you can get your teeth into of um, lines and different uh, different types of marks that we can make something out of we can sort of make the version the paint version of this pencil and the pencil marks and there's really not much, apart from it's a train station, um, we can think, well, what could that be? Because I, I did this pretty much um, in one, in 10 seconds or, or so, 10 seconds to 30 seconds, while someone was standing there pretty quickly. Um, now I want to get, using this as reference, so I've got this um, down on my down on my easel here, it's a sort of, well it's not really an easel, it's a board attached to the wall. Um, now if I start off with, um, really I've got to look at what I've got and think I'm going to be creating some washes over the top of it. Now this incidentally is, um, it's often called a mile stick. Uh, I used to think that meant mile um, because it was a mile away, kept you a mile away from the picture, but it sort of keeps it's something to lean your hand on, so that you don't. And especially when you're working in oils, which is what I'm doing today, um, the it's important not to smudge them because they're not going to be dry, and um, this just gives you a bit of comfort. Mal stick refers to the German for paint, um, Malen. Um, so it's just paint stick, but uh, usually you'll see them with a cork on the end or something soft like that. This is a little um, L-shaped hook, and I I got this idea from another artist um, at Patching's Festival in Nottinghamshire called Tim Fisher. I saw him using this, so I don't know if he invented it, but um, he may well have done so. That's uh, not my idea technically. Um, but that just hooks on either to the top of your easel there or to the top of the painting. Um, if it's a small one it tends to be a bit easier like that. Um, easier gives you the angle, that's what I mean. Um, so we're sort of about four centimetres, six centimetres away there. Um, what I've been doing really is to sort of let the paint sort of run down. I'll have a kind of milk white a thin wash of the solvent and solvent that I use is um, the orange zest um, solvent which is much better for you when you're in an enclosed environment you don't have to open a window um, low odour thinners even give you quite a quite a sort of um, Bit slight headache and you can taste it after you smell it too. Um, I'm now kind of letting the paint just run down and this is what I tend to like to let happen. Um, accidents that are kind of based on um, what's already there. So half of the picture I'll be doing with with accidents and really random random factors that I can create. Um, I better move my my sketchbooks just below here and it's going to be dripping down. So uh, 
I'll move that to the left so it doesn't get dripped on. But it's all part of the fun. A bit of mess is um, quite quite a good thing, I think, when, you, when you're doing this kind of thing. And it's going to be, I've got, I've got thicker oil paint mixed up uh, so I can sort of vary the, I've got to remember to keep referring to my drawing um, and I'm, I'm kind of looking down all the time. I'll kind of hold it up there. So it's, um, it's, it's a kind of, in a way it's like sort of spot the difference, but it's kind of get your reference is the phrase to remember and building up the dark and the light areas these these sort of light areas here I've got to think which bits are the main the main the key areas the, the bits that do things I suppose um, and it's not always a fully conscious activity I'll be sort of mucking about here and there and thinking well, what's going on there and Pushing thing, pushing the paint around, letting it cascade down, and then, then there'll be a kind of there'll be broad strokes and quite fine areas that I um, that I'm putting in. Now these are these are kind of running down. It's nice to see the paint sort of run down a bit. Um, And really it's a build up of, I've already built up a good lot of thick paint under this and this has taken a couple of days to dry. Um, I'll just move that drawing a second and I have a, a trusty cloth there and this can be used as a sort of drawing tool to kind of sculpt the background in a way. I can smudge things around so you can use oil paint a bit like you would use watercolour really, it's not um, confined to these big thick chunks of paint, I think that's what the preconception of oil paint is and um, as well as that the preconception of watercolour is that everything's going to be quite delicate but I think if you, the only thing to remember is to get a range of types of mark um, to be able to tell the story of what is happening or that character um, and we've got a kind of on the on the day I did this there's a sort of blob thing I can't even remember what that is it's probably a person that was sitting there um, and we can have a kind of suggestion of that on this side I'll shift the mile stick over and I uh, before I started, I'd, I kind of use an acrylic texture paste first and then um, oil paint over the top of that. Um, it won't work, incidentally, if you try and do that the other way around. You can't put pl the plastic acrylic paint over the top of the oil paint. It just won't sit on top of it. But um, you can, you usually buy sized canvases or surfaces um, this is a piece of MDF by the way and um, sized with acrylic sort of thinned down acrylic really now that is a kind of it's developing into a sort of ghostly shape on the side there we can sort of give it a bit more uh, rudimentary chunks of paint to start to explain something else about it but I don't I don't think I want because in the sketch that is pretty non-defined in relation to that that's the main character and that is that could be anything a kind of ghost of a person in a way a sort of or you can in in a painting where it's going to be quite dreamy you could think it well it's it could be anything you want it to be really um, anything that that figure could be thinking or it could be a kind of um, symbol for the other figure to take in um, and then we've got 
a few a few marks just to start to explain that these can be kind of half wiped away sometimes um, and allowed to, this uh, it slightly soaks into the acrylic the the solvent and then it can't be moved again um, but the actual paint can which is how I tend to work it's finding my way as I'm as I'm going and it and it can be quite nerve-wracking at the start of the whole process but then once I get going it's always it's always a pleasure to get going with and it's a relief really <laughs> now we've got marks developing in here that are really quite interesting it's got um crusts um I'm trying to and get the camera in closer yes this is the close-up of the um figure and it's developing a few crusts of its own and um, as the paint runs down it stays wet for a while well it's the mainly the solvent it's solvent with painting and then it can can basically be allowed to do things on its own if you if you can leave it for as long as uh, as long as it needs to dry oil paint tends to take about three days um, to be touch dry but it can be can be sooner than that depending on um, how thin it's been made to be um, but uh, this is a kind of this is a kind of sort of taster of my some of my methods um, and it's um, yes one of uh, one of sort of a series of videos I'm hoping to put on as well as um, classes um, that I'm going to be running online in the not too distant future. Well thank you very much that was uh, enjoyable I hope you found it interesting um, and it's uh, one of as I said before it's one of many uh, or one of a series of these uh, videos that I think will be nice to put on um, now we're all indoors um, but uh, I'm also planning to have uh, do hopefully do life drawing in some way and hopefully do um, classes in this way possibly on uh, a meetup platform like zoom or something um, but we'll have to see about that but this is a sort of a way to get into it <laughs> but thank you very much for watching